Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Oracle Modern Customer Experience 2017. Brought to you by Oracle. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas, the Mandalay Bay for Oracle's Modern CX Conference, hashtag Modern CX. It's theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Silicon Angle. My co-host Peter Burst for the two days. Our next guest is Ron Corbusier, owner and CEO of Relationship One, back again from last year, and uh, it was one of my memorable interviews last year. Welcome back. Thank you for having to me. To theCUBE. We, we went down and dirty last year. I remember <laughs> we were having a great conversation about ad tech, and, and essentially, if you take that video, it's on YouTube, and look at it, I guarantee you, it's going to play right into what happened this yep. year. So, again, you, we, we predicted it. We yeah. didn't say AI, but we did say <laughs> we're going to see data really driving, and that's what Oracle ended up locking in on, data. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, data is going to be uh, the underlying conversation for the next few years, right? So, we spoke a lot last year about MarTech stack, and actually MarTech and AdTech kind of colliding, yeah. coming together. Um, and all of that is being fueled by the mass quantities of data that we have as sales and marketing folks mm -hmm. out there to leverage, and, yeah. and how do you use it? It's never about, and do I have enough data? You know, a lot of times you feel, yeah. feel you almost have too much, but it's you know now how can you use it appropriately? We were talking uh, before we uh, came on on camera here about that that dynamic of ad tech and martech collision we talked about last year. It's interesting if you just say digital end to end is a fabric, then you can still talk about these pillars of solutions, but they're not silos. If you look at the holistic data approach right. and say, hey, if we're going to have horizontally scalable data, which we want, frictionless, less than 150 milliseconds responses that they want to promote, you can still do your pillars, but be open to data sharing. Versus, yeah. here's my siloed stack, I do this, I do this, that's shifted, and that's what Oracle's main news is here. Yeah, Comment it, on that. yeah absolutely. So I think, I think what you're seeing, even in not only Oracle, but at an organizational level, people are kind of taking a, a more holistic view of data that they own and data that they can enrich with external information, right? And how does that information then fuel all of these other areas within customer experience, right? So within the CX world. So how do you use that to provide better service? How do you do that, use that information to optimize your sales efforts? And, and from a marketing standpoint, obviously my background, it's how do we leverage that to optimize our spend, optimize our communication, our orchestration, all of those pieces. That all comes down to that common you know, language of data that we have access to. So about the real-time aspect, because we, we teased on it last time, when we did talk about how to leverage some of the advertising opportunities yep. uh, and the role of data in real-time. And that's been a message here, from batch to real-time. So the consumer's in motion all the time, depending upon their context. Yeah, I, well, this, how does real time? Yeah, this is, this is kind of the evolution of what we're seeing in the technology, right? Because historically, you've built a campaign, you've maybe created some type of journey or persona, you're building content around very specific elements within a life cycle structure. Life cycles are not linear any longer, they never really were, but they're <laughs> definitely not now. Uh, and you have to adapt very quickly. You have to kind of you know, get leverage technology to say, what am I saying, communicating, in what channel, but in more in a real time thing, right? You have to look at what was the last thing that individual did, the activity, all of that. Historically, you haven't had that depth or degree of uh, real time less, you know, it's been more kind of uh, of structured cadence. That doesn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. That's not going to exist going forward. And that's where things like AI, which I always hesitate to use that term because yeah. it's kind of the, the buzzword now of, of today, uh, but tools that are more of that, uh, you know, augmentation of how we do things, right? Leveraging the power of technology, that's going to change how we orchestrate things, how we communicate. So I'm just looking at your tweet here, I want to bring this <laughs> up because you mentioned AI and yep. we were talking about it. Uh, thanks to all who stopped by my MME 17, Modern Marketing Experience 17, a little bit of a jab at the messaging, that's cool, I like that. Session on artificial <laughs> intelligence, loved all the support from my fellow modern marketers. What do you mean by that? Were you um, you make a bold statement. Did you stand? Did you have courage? You stand tall. Did you call out AI? What was the what was the conversation there? I did well. I called out kind of the silliness of the term AI, right? So I picked on that the marketers, but I picked on the term. So we as you know marketers, I, I call them the squirrel moments. That as marketers, we're always kind of on to the next thing, right? And, and I did. I kind of reviewed the past eight some years of these conferences, and what were the topics, right? There were some topics that were transformational topics, you know, like how does marketing automation or, or organizational change or those type of yeah. things, right? 
those are things that kind of stick with you. And then there are things that are more like timely things, like predictive scoring and all of it. They're tactics. They're more things that I use as a, as a marketer or salesperson. What I was picking on with AI is that it, it's, it's uh, the buzzword, it gets you funding, it gets you people in a room for a conference, that's yeah. great, uh, but it doesn't do anything by itself. It's really an enabler, it's a pervasive thing that combines machine cycle yeah. and data, but you have to teach it, you have to you know, incorporate it into your applications, and as marketers, ultimately, it's going to change our tool set to make it better. So it's more of kind of poking fun at the term yeah, yeah. and kind of well, we always debate it. We, we always say AI. I mean, I've said it on the queue, AI is BS. Although yes. I love a software guy, <laughs> I love AI because it really promotes software that has been very nuanced. So IoT, machine learning, this is very geeky computer science stuff that's super cool. So anything that can take that mainstream in the software world, I'm a big fan of. That being said, I think the augmentation is the real message, which is you can use machine learning, you can use software, use some tactical things yeah. to make things better. You said it uh, on our earlier segment this morning, which is there's a variety of things that you can automate away. Well, I mean, the, that's the, 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 the thing that's, and, and, and you mentioned earlier, it's, it's the ability that we now have the ability to collect an enormous amount of data that's relevant and yep. important, yep. and we now have the technology to actually mm -hmm. do something with that data, but we still have to apply it, and there's a lot of change that has to happen. Um, so where, where, what, what, the way AI is different from other systems is that historically systems, a financial system, software would deliver an answer. And it was highly stylized and there was rarely a clear correspondence with the real world. So we closed the books, how much money did we make? There was mm -hmm. an answer and it came from a set of data structures that were defined within the system. Now we're trying to bring in the real world and have these technologies focus on the real world and they're giving ranges of possible options. And that is kind of new. And it's, and it's good and it's useful, but it does not take the discretionary, uh, the requirement for discretion out of the system. And that's yeah. why it's the augmentation. Well, Ron and I were talking last, last year about this, uh, Peter, and I think you're getting at a trajectory that I've been saying for a while, and, and this is kind of developing in, in, in real time here on theCUBE and also some of our commentary is the role of software development and DevOps that we've seen in cloud is moving into the front lines of business, meaning just there's their techniques. You're seeing agile already kind of being talked about. You're seeing um, standing up campaigns. Yep. Yep. So language, I mean, like you could almost go to the cloud stack and say uh, building blocks, EC2, S3, Kubernetes, <laughs> containers, uh, uh, microservices, and apply that to marketing because there's a lot of parallels going on to the characteristics of the infrastructure, certainly critical infrastructure to new enabling infrastructure. Yeah. So it's interesting that you're seeing marketers becoming more savvy and being kind of inundated. Well, yeah, What's your thoughts on that, reaction? Yeah, it's the evolution though. I mean, if you go back to, you know, we as marketers have been using rules engines, we've been using tools like collaborative filtering. You go back to late 90s, early 2000s, right, when we were building recommendation engines and simple, right? That's, that's algorithmic kind of stuff, right? No different than we're doing today with pricing rules and all that mm -hmm. stuff. The difference is that uh, you now have more power to do it. You have the ability to do it more real time and on the fly. More you compute. Use far more data, <laughs> right? Yeah, more computing power <laughs> and more data. Not only your data that you own, but data that you, you know, leverage from third party to really understand people. And you have a wider lens, right? Mm -hmm. Historically, you're making you know, recommendations based on what you had in a cart or some other things that people had bought that also had that in the cart. That's different now, right? With this type of technology, this enabling kind of world, you can look at a lot more data points to kind of give you that. The Peter problem, and I, were, I was going to say, the problem is that anything around AI requires a couple things, right? It requires, it, it is a dumb system. So AI, it's still a computer. <laughs> it's still a computer. <laughs> so everyone forgets that for it to work, it has to learn, right? So I have some friends who have built marketing tools on top of Watson, for example. It takes hundreds and hundreds of hours for it to actually start doing something, right? You have to train it. You have to but not even only though, even the, data, the, even the word it. learning and training <laughs> is misleading in yes, many respects. Yeah. So, but but because at the end of the day, it's software, but. What is new is that it's being applied in yep. richer, more complex domains. Uh, the recommendation engine used to be just for recommendation. Now we're using those same models and we're combining them and applying them to right. richer, more complex domains. Yet, ideally, the software is not getting more difficult to use. And I think what really makes this compelling as a software engineer yeah, yeah. is that we're doing all this more complexity, but we're, we're packaging it and making it simpler. 
It, I think that's the point of where Oracle's going and why they don't call it AI, right? They're, they're using it more kind adaptive of at the micro, ad, adaptive, right? Yeah. Because they're thinking of it at kind of the microservice level, right? They're thinking yeah. of like, how can we make these widgets of functionality to better the tools we have, right? To incorporate it into, to not make it so, uh, you know, a, a jump forward in our tool set. It's just now yeah. uh, an, an augmented component of what we do today. And it's almost a stack approach. You've got foundational building blocks and at the top is highly, high right. velocity, highly dynamic with apps. And you could argue we were talking that, you know, the CMO is going to be an app shop, essentially, someday. Uh, but this begs the question, and I'd like to get your response, both of you guys to weigh in on this, because this is kind of a question that I'd, I'd like to get on the record is, what is modern marketing these days? <laughs> Define modern marketing, because what we're getting at here is, to your point of the evolution, is we've seen this movie before, okay? Is it a replatforming? Is it a building block approach? What is a modern marketer? What does it modern marketing mean? Uh, I, How do you execute that? Yeah, I think it's quick and nimble and adaptive. I mean, th the whole point of modern marketing is that you're always kind of looking at how you can rethink, how you can optimize, how you can leverage technology to do things. It's not about you know, uh, replacing headcount right, uh, <laughs> with a machine or a tool or, or tech. It's really about how do you leverage that headcount more effectively, how can you focus on optimization using those technologies. So modern marketing is, again, probably another buzzword, but yeah. just like modern sales, modern commerce, all of that. <laughs> but it's really about how do you enable it with that stack to do better. So is it fashion or is it like, hey, there's a modern marketer over there, look at what she's wearing, <laughs> he's, he or she's wearing. Or is it more technology based that's got some fundamental foundational shifts that are, are being worked on or both? Uh, it, it's, it's leveraging technology and it's leveraging data more effectively and creatively, right? And it's not being stuck with a prescriptive approach on, on campaign and orchestration and building. Right? Yeah. You know, it still requires strategy and all of that, but it's really how you approach it. So how you think? So, so you're, I, what's your I, angle? I, you know, I, 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 that's a great question, and I was, and that's why I giggled about it. And I think you gave a great answer. You know, it's, it, and and you know, many of the precepts of the, the three key precepts of Abigail are uh, iterative, optimistic, and empirical, yep. and it's nimble, quick, yep. and you know, you know, you change. But to me, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the question this way. Modern marketing focuses on delivering value as opposed to the customer, to the customer, not back into the business. Now, it used to be that you would deliver into the business, you'd say, oh, we give you a whole bunch of new leads, we give you a whole bunch of this, and if along the way it created value for the customer, that's okay. But more often than not, it was annoying. And as customers can share their experience and share information about how, they, how a brand engaged them, that gets amplified, annoying gets amplified. And I think if you focus on, are you creating value for the customer, you also end up with the derivative uh, element that you're accelerating leads, you're ex you're, you're, you have more visibility into where they are in the process and where they are in the journey. So I guess the way I'd answer it, it's not distinct from yours, but well, you the idea of modern marketing focuses on creating value for the customer, and the only way you consistently do that is by being nimble, and blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Yeah, I, I agree in, in the same thing though, the, a core tenant, if you will, of modern marketing is not only, absolutely, it, it is the value proposition, it's also making sure you understand the, the impact of the value proposition, right? The velocity of the pipeline, the impact oh, on revenue, yeah. all of those things, right? And because if, you, if, if you're just, you know, uh, if it's all about that value, which it has to be, right, from a customer yeah. perspective, but you're not doing all of the other pieces, you're not going to justify the spend, you're not going to get so, you know, all let of let those. Me, let me see if I can thread the two together. points together, because what I'm seeing by listening is, you mentioned the, um, oh, the main thing in my mind was the data. That's yep. different, right? You're saying, okay, think differently, talk to the customer, and the value to the enterprise value is being created through, through a different mechanism versus just serving not it. Not so really, not really. The fundamental focus historically of marketing has been, what are we doing for the business? What are we doing for sales? What are we doing? MQLs. Now we, <laughs> what's that? Yeah, and now if we focus on, uh, now if you say, well, no, we have to create value for the customer in everything we do, yeah. then we get permission to do things differently. We get more data out of right. the customer because right. the trust is there. Uh, the customer is ten. We, we are we're we're allowed to bias the customer to the next best. So, I'm, so I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to answer my question. So I I, I, I see that your point. My point is that this: the modern marketer is defined by doing it. The business practices it a little bit differently. Right. to achieve the same thing. By focusing on creating value, they have to do things because differently, and now they can. I mean, we saw Time Warner, they, did, they weren't using data prior. Right. 
that's a little different. Right. If you go outward to go in, yeah. to create value yeah. while doing the table stake stuff. It's changing strategically thinking different of how you do it, right? Creating that value proposition is very different and also being able to measure and optimize, are you doing it correctly? Is it having impact on the business, right? Uh, most of my customers are not not-for-profits, right? They actually have to yeah, show the bottom yeah. line, right? And, yeah. and impact, so, and, and all of that requires data, yeah. and the speed of, and velocity in which we have to run requires tech. Yeah. And they, right? have, they got gestures in, in the market with customers, they have that touch point, right. they can but leverage here's, that. Here's where I think we agree, modern marketing is not speeding up and increasing the rate and lowering the cost of doing bad marketing. No, no, I mean, that that's kind of exactly. That marker's that, point. <laughs> that's, <laughs> right, <laughs> you can spend a lot of money to do bad marketing, that, that's, you know. Let's double down on our bad marketing. <laughs> exactly. Um, Ron, thanks so much uh, for coming on theCUBE again. Thanks for sharing the insights. It's always a pleasure to get down and dirty and, 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 and peel back the onion on some of these things. Final question for you, what do you expect for the evolution for this next year? Oh man. I think AI is going to be with us for a while, you know, just because it's the new buzzword. So we've got a couple cycles on that. We've got it reminds me of Web 2.0. Exactly. What is it? Yeah. Well, and then that lasted for a few years as well. I think over the next year or so, we're actually going to see the benefits of that augmentation, right? We're going to actually see some of these microservices, if you will, start fueling some of the tools that we already have. Uh, you're also going to see kind of that further collision of ad tech and martech, right? Because everything's digital and, and the impact of uh, what that means for us as marketers. I so can't wait for the hashtag marketing native, because <laughs> cloud native is coming and that someone's going to make it up. I hope not. Uh, you did. You just did. <laughs> okay, <you> marketing <laughs> native. It's your fault. And what does that mean? We'll, we'll do a whole segment on that. Exactly. We'll get Ron to come in. Hey, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great thanks to see you. Uh, I'm John Furrier. Peter Burris here inside the theCUBE getting all the action, extracting the data and sharing it with you. Ron, thanks to Ron for coming on again twice in a row. Uh, two years in a row. This is theCUBE, we'll be back with more after this short break. Robert Hershevik. People obviously know you from Shark Tank, but the Hershevik group has been really laser focused on cybersecurity. So I actually helped to bring a product called Checkpoint to Canada, firewalls, URL filtering, that kind of stuff. But you're also an entrepreneur, right? And you know the business, you've been in software, you're in the tech business. And I'm, I'm striking, you get a lot of pitches as entertainment meets business. On our show, we're a bubble. We don't do a lot of tech 